Lewis to the gap on the track. Jump in. Wow, he made the catch. Oh, baby. What is going on, everybody? And welcome back to the Hum Baby Baseball Channel. And today, we got to talk about the Seattle Mariners, one of baseball's least successful teams over the past 20 years but this drought may soon be coming to an end after a dreadful start of their 2020 season the mariners finished strong they went 20 and 15 over their last 35 and they've been able to add a pretty damn good core of solid young players through trade through the draft and that includes kyle lewis the rookie of the freaking year evan white jared kelnick J.P. Crawford, and more recently, the Mariners are adding some established big league names to help them compete in 21 and 22 and going forward. And this includes closer Ken Giles, who was signed to a multi-year deal, which was necessary because he is going to be out for 21 after Tommy John. However, in a weird way, this is kind of like, it's like a move where you draft somebody, a superstar prospect who could help in the future, but it requires patience. You got to wait. It could definitely pay off though. The last time we saw Giles fully healthy was 2019 and he was elite for the Blue Jays. 1.8 ERA in 53 appearances, striking out an insane 83 batters in 53. And he's only 30. He'll be 31 next year in 22. And by then the Mariners should be in a better position to compete. Not that they're terrible now, as we'll get into, but they should be even better by then with another year of development for their young players and more guys being ready for the big leagues. And uh, yeah, it's not the most exciting move because he's not ready yet, but still, I think it's a pretty good move. Meanwhile, James Paxton is coming back to Seattle on an $8.5 million deal that could pay out as much as 10 with incentives. He had back surgery before 2020, but he came back to start five games for the Yankees, struck out 26 batters in 20 innings, gave up four home runs. He had an inflated ERA, but it's a very small sample size. So now returning where he found a comfort zone back in 17 and 18 when he went a combined 23 and 11, then continuing that dominance in 2019 with the Yankees going 15 and 6 with a 3.82 ERA and 186 strikeouts in 150 innings of work. And this is a big signing for the Mariners who needed another big arm in the rotation. They now got it. They also signed former Mets prospect Chris Flexen, who made the most of his 2020 season in Korea, getting in shape, becoming one of the better pitchers in the KBO, but he's still unproven at the big league level. He'll get a crack at that rotation, but he could also be in the bullpen. We'll have to wait and see. And speaking of the bullpen, Keenan Middleton was signed to provide much needed quality middle relief there. And he's got a 3.48 career ERA, 9.0 strikeout rate for the Angels. And an even bigger move was a trade with the Rangers acquiring Rafael Montero, whose fastball has just been getting faster, topped out at 97 in 2020, went eight for eight in save opportunities. He's got a good sinker, a good changeup, and he kind of became the closer for the Rangers last year. And now he should get the opportunity to be the closer for the Mariners for now, obviously while Ken Giles is still recovering. So decent off season, but you know, they haven't made any massive, crazy big free agent signings other than James Paxton and Ken Giles. But uh, I think they're pretty, pretty good for what they have because they have so much good, strong, young talent. They don't want to give out any crazy uh, contracts right now when they have so many good players. And let's get into that with the starting lineup. And it starts out with JP Crawford, former first round pick, won his first gold glove in 2020. First of many, I'm sure. And he showed massive improvement with the bat as well. He's going to be spectacular defensively. He's going to steal some bases. He's going to work the walk. He's not going to hit 300 more than likely and hit a bunch of home runs. But otherwise, he is an ideal leadoff guy for the team. And then you got Dylan Moore at second base who might hit some home runs. And he will. He's not as flashy defensively as Crawford, but he gets the job done. He's okay defensively, but he's going to bring you pop. He's got a 90.4 average exit velocity in 2020, 17 home runs and just 384 career at bats could be in line for a big 2021. And then you got the American League Rookie of the Year, Kyle freaking Lewis, okay? And he led the team in home runs. He led the team in hits. He led the team in walks. He made a bunch of great catches in the outfield. He's one of the most exciting young players in the game. And based on the power that he's shown so far in the big leagues, he could potentially hit 30 plus home runs, at least 20. 
So look for another big year from Kyle Lewis. And then you got Kyle Seeger. I think he's a little underrated. The dude just makes amazing contact. He's good for 20 plus home runs. He's got excellent defense. Elite eye at the plate. In 248 at bats in 2020, he struck out 33 times. Then you got Mitch Hanniger who I'm not so sure of his health situation. He missed all of 2020, but if he's back and healthy like he was back in 18, he could be a big bat in the lineup. That year he hit 26 home runs, 285 average, and 93 RBI. And another potential power bat is a lefty, Jose Marmolejos, signed by the Nats way back in 2011, rose slowly through the ranks of the minor leagues until he finally hit 18 home runs with a 315 batting average in 2018, with the Fresno Grizzlies named Fresno Grizzlies Hitter of the Year. Finally got his chance in the big leagues, and he hit six home runs in just 107 at-bats for the Mariners. He's got 20-plus home run potential right there, and he'll likely platoon with Braden Bishop, a plus outfielder, plus runner. Hit well in the minors, hasn't shown it yet in the big leagues, but he'll get another opportunity, and... Remember, Jared Kelnick, as I said, is on the way. So he is going to be here ready soon. And uh, this is the first rounder. He hit 23 home runs in the minors with a 291 average in 2019. And at DH, we have Ty France. And when I think of Ty France, I think of the 2019 El Paso Chihuahuas. Because that year, I don't know what the freak happened to Ty France, but he was an absolute beast. He was hitting over 400. He ended up with 399 batting average when he got promoted with 27 home runs in just 296 at-bats. He looked like the next coming of Hank Greenberg. And since then, he hasn't been that good at the big league level or anything close to that, but he's still decent. He hit 302 with a 362 on base with the Mariners last year. Hit a couple home runs in 86 at-bats. So something to look for. It'll be interesting to see what he can do in 2021. Obviously, he's got ridiculous potential. Evan White is one of the big Mariners prospects who they offer that multi-year $24 million extension to before his big league debut. And he has got unbelievable defense, but hit only 176, striking out 42% of his at-bats. He was a little bit rushed through the minor leagues and everything with the weird 2020 caused him to be rushed even more. I think he does have 25 plus home run power and if he can just settle in a little bit, bring that average up to at least 240, perhaps 250, then I think he's gonna be I mean, he's going to help the team win just with that defense alone. But if you bring some power and just get on base a little more, he's going to be definitely big for the Mariners. Finally, behind the plate, you got either Luis Torrens or Tom Murphy. Now, Torrens, he showed great defensive talent in the minor leagues. He was ranked as one of the best top defensive catching prospects in the game. But his bat hasn't been the best, although he does seem to make solid contact. His career batting average is below the Mendoza line. So that's not good. Just one home run and 207 at-bats. That's where Tom Murphy comes in. After missing an entire 2020 with a broken foot, he should be back at 21. Remember, he hit 18 home runs with a 324 on base back in 2019. So this lineup is sneaky good. I mean, it's got quality bat-to-ball skills like Kyle Seager. It's got Kyle Lewis, your rookie of the year. Excellent defense all over. 20-plus home run power all over from at least five, maybe six of these guys. And, yeah, I mean, there's more development needed. There might be a lack of superstar power, although Kyle Lewis is making headlines. Jaron Kelnick is going to be there soon making headlines. So, overall, man, it's not bad. I mean, let's be real. This is not a bad lineup. It is not an A-plus lineup, but it's not bad at all. I'm, In fact, I'm going to go ahead and give this lineup a B. Taking a quick glance at the bench, I do like the platoon options they have with Marmolejos and Bishop, with Torrens and Murphy. Torrens and or Murphy, they're going to you know, be able to provide a certain set of skills coming off the bench, depending on who's starting there. Um, obviously, Murphy will provide a bigger bat, and Torrens will provide maybe better defense. So after that, you have Shed Long, Sam Haggerty, both awesome speed. Uh, they could both be used, you know, as pinch running options in case of extra innings for that garbage rule, uh, you know. But uh, Shed hasn't hit, big, you know, been that great at hitting big league pitching. Just a 171 average last year. But, uh, yeah, Donovan Walton also hasn't hit above 200 yet. So as long as the regulars stay healthy, this bench, you know, it's nice for, you know, defensive and base running needs. And other than that, it's, it's kind of thin, to be honest. And, you know, with promotions like Kelnick and others, it'll get better. But as of now, I'm going to give the bench a C-. minus. Jumping into the rotation, as I mentioned earlier, got a huge bump with James Paxton. But I think their ace is still going to be Marco Gonzalez. And this is a guy who led all of Major League Baseball with a 9 to 1 strike to walk ratio. This guy's been legit. He had a 7 and 2 record, 3.1 ERA. And then Paxton, if healthy, yeah, that's going to be a very nice one-two punch at the top. 
Yusei Kikuchi, a lefty who can hit 95, keeps the ball on the ground for the most part. He kind of reinvented himself last season working on a new cutter, trying to work on you know his delivery and everything, and he improved his strikeout rate from 6.5 in 2019 to 9 in 2020. Still gave up a lot of runs, 5.17 ERA, but he showed some nasty stuff, and I'm excited to see what he can bring in 21. And then Justice Sheffield, who's slider fooled lefties all season long. In 55 innings of work, he gave up just two home runs. Justin Dunn comes next. He also showed great stuff in 2020. In fact, there was a 12 inning stretch over two games where he gave up just two hits. And he ended the season with a four and run record, 4.34 ERA. Like I said earlier, they picked up Chris Flexen. They still got Nick Margavichis available and either of them could be part of a six man rotation, a concept that the Mariners have used in the past and are supposedly returning to in 21. So like I said, Flexen was great in Korea, and if you want more specifics on that, he was 8-4 and four with a 3.01 ERA, 132 strikeouts to 30 walks. That doesn't mean he's going to be just as good in the big leagues, but hey, at least he showed something over there and earned his way back. And let's not forget, super prospect Logan Gilbert hasn't pitched above A ball yet, but this kid will be ready soon. He had a 2.19 ERA in the minors, 165 strikeouts in just 135 innings. And uh, he's the big prospect, and he's on his way. We might see him late 2021, definitely 22. So I think this rotation is solid. You got Marco Gonzalez at the top. You got another year of experience under the belts of guys like Sheffield and Dunn. You got added experience and quality now with Paxton. I can't say it's bad. You know, and I like the lineup. I like the rotation. The Mariners, they could be a surprise team in the West. I'm going to stick with the same grade I gave the lineup, and I'm going to give this starting rotation also a B. The bullpen now. It was an issue last season. I mean, the Mariners, they, they struggled to find a consistent closer. And so they traded for a guy named Rafael Montero, hoping that uh, he would be just that. And now he wasn't a closer until 2020. Like I said, though, 100% in save opportunities. So when he got the chance, he came through. Then there's a rookie named Anthony Misevich, who averaged 11.3 strikeouts per nine. He's got a sick cutter. And uh, he's going to be more than just a lefty specialist for the Mariners. I can see him handling some important innings out of that bullpen. Kendall Graveman is still around. He is going to be back and do some long relief. Mike can start on occasion here and there if needed. Casey Sadler, good stuff. Just walks too many batters, gets himself into trouble. So he needs some work. Yohan Ramirez showed great stuff last season. 26 strikeouts in 20 innings and a 2.61 ERA. So... Other than that, you know, it's not the strongest bullpen. There are some guys who will still need to prove themselves in spring training, but there are decent arms in there. And, you know, with the rotation, you know, eating up a lot of innings, this bullpen should be able to hold quite a few games for the M's. And I think they'll be decent. And I'm going to give this bullpen a C plus. So there you have it, a B for the rotation and for the lineup. I got a C minus for the bench. I got a C plus for the bullpen overall. I'm really excited about this team. I think that they're pretty good. I'm going to give them as an overall team pretty surprisingly good grade of a B minus. I really think this could be a surprise team. And if you check out the World Series odds right now, now this is not professional advice. So don't take it as such. But right now the Mariners are at 80 to 1 odds right there with the Tigers, Orioles, and unfortunately the Giants. And I just feel like it wouldn't be that bad of a bet to throw 25 bucks down on the Mariners for a chance to win 2000. Again, don't put any money on the Mariners because I say to, I'm just saying if I was there that's what I would probably do. I say, you know what? Throw 25 down. Hey, if the Mariners win the World Series, 2,000 bucks. Because I think it's possible. I don't think it's likely, but I think it's possible. I like this team. I can see this team coming together. I can see these youngsters just doing something special. Maybe I'm insane and let me know down below. Well, I, we already know I am, so that's nearly not for, up for debate. But anyway, I like this team. I think they look pretty good and could be coming out of this long, long playoff slump very soon. So give them a B- minus overall. I think they have a chance to win a lot of games. It's going to be tough, obviously, but hey. It's going to be fun. So anyway, you guys, let me know if you're a Mariners fan down below because I don't think I've, I've met very many, if any, Mariners fans. Let me know down below in the comment section. Thank you so much for joining me. Hit the thumbs up button. Hit the subscribe button. Don't miss my previews. See you later. When the Giants come to town, it's bye-bye, baby. Every time the chips are down, it's bye-bye. Baby, history's in the making at Oracle Park.